In North Wales are the remains of a secret facility, now a wasteland. This is a wild place, and it is far from civilization. The surviving signage suggests a dirty history. North Wales is a mining area of Great Britain, but there is nothing of the infrastructure of mining about this place. It would make no sense to put a factory here without workers nearby, so this seems to have some classified official purpose. Hollowed out buildings in a remote location point to a history that's been erased. So you look inside these buildings and it's very, you know, sort of bare, austere, concrete walls, clearly intended to store something or make something that was combustible, sensitive, fragile. You don't see remnants of wallpaper. This place has been emptied systematically and scrubbed from top to bottom. And there's this kind of lunatic graffiti all over the walls of one of the structures. Messages from the long departed tease a deeper history hidden beneath the surface. If I know anything about the archaeology of the abandoned, I know that what's important here is not these buildings. What's important here is what lies beneath. Colin Barber first came here 10 years ago. It is a beautiful place. I think it reminds us of how bad things could be. And thank goodness we never used what was uh, produced here. In one building, he found the strange writing on the walls. Well, I thought it was a graffiti, but it's mixed up with personal comments and comments upon the uh, general state of the world at that time. And as we look at it more carefully, I mean, I'm not great at math, but these are clearly mathematical equations, formula of a very advanced nature. Well, this here is magnesium carbonate. The one below that is sodium chromate. This might have had some military lineage because, you know, classification was so strict they would tell scientists often, you can't write these things down on paper because the paper could go astray. Write it on the wall. We can police up the walls. We can't police up every scrap of paper and wastebasket. Secrecy was paramount because here they were working on a deadly chemical, mustard gas. Used in the First World War to clear out enemy trenches, this weapon was a toxic sulfur compound. Mustard gas has nothing to do with mustard, and it's not a gas. It is sprayed into the air as a mist. And if you get it on your skin, or God forbid you get it in your lungs, it causes blisters wherever it goes. Blisters, burning, and pain. Mustard gas killed 90,000 soldiers in the First World War. This was the beginning of large-scale chemical warfare. Mustard gas was definitely one of the you know, most horrific weapons of the First World War. So horrific that people talked about banning its use after the war. But they were also viewed by the government in the 1930s as an essential part of British deterrence. So they manufactured a lot of mustard gas in the interwar period to be prepared in case they needed it in World War II. Well, they built these tunnels because in 1939, when the first factory came online, they were producing 216 tons a week, and they only had storage for 100 tons. At the onset of World War II, 
the government dug new depots underground, safe from German bombing. The largest depot was here, at the MS factory. In these tunnels, mainly, it was storage. 65-ton tanks were brought in, and eventually you could store 4,000 tons in here. This facility was so well hidden and so secret that throughout the whole war, the Nazis never knew it was here. Facilities like the MS factory made enough mustard gas to retaliate in another chemical war. But one building on the site had an even deadlier purpose. This is building P6. This place was built to manufacture pyro mustard gas. But it transpired that with improvements in technique, they didn't need this particular building to do that. Bred down here, both sides, were the officers of all of the scientists, the chemists. Nobody could come into here unless they passed the guard. Here, they began work on a new weapon that would be infinitely more lethal. At a chemical weapons factory in Northern Wales, one building was given a special assignment. You think mustard gas is dangerous. Building P6 is a facility for making U-235, enriched uranium. The stuff you use to build atom bombs. Behind the scenes during the Second World War, Scientists on both sides were in a race to build a thermonuclear warhead. Whoever could build the atom bomb first would likely win the war. But both sides were missing a key ingredient. At the beginning of the Second World War, we were looking at a way to remove the isotope uranium-235 from uranium-238 because this substance was essential in the manufacture of any atomic bombs. That was the bit that made you go bang. To make that bang, they needed 33 pounds of radioactive material, an impossible sounding task. But here in building P6, they tested a new process. By heating uranium and putting it through a filter, it would become enriched. It was a discovery that transformed nuclear science. Here in North Wales, the Allies achieved something that no one had ever achieved before. They're able to produce enriched uranium with U-235 on an industrial scale. In less than four years, the Manhattan Project tests its first nuclear bomb. And a month later, two were dropped on Japan. The Second World War ended with a fierce display of scientific might. Nuclear weapons ended the Second World War quickly. And if it had been necessary, they'd have been used to end the war in Europe too. <laughs> 